It is my task to read a letter of communique from the second African American to serve as mayor of the city of New Orleans. It is from the Honorable Sidney Bartholomew, who wrote, thank you very much for inviting me to your evening of celebration and reconnecting to the mission and importance of progressive, inclusive, competent leadership. I know it will be a great celebration of the many successes that you, your father, and the entire Morial family enjoyed in the role of leadership for our great city. I am very sorry that I will not be able to be there to share in the celebration due to a commitment to attend the Children's Defense Fund Conference in Cincinnati. I was blessed to be able to follow your father as the second black mayor and to precede you as the third black mayor. I believe you are correct in stating that we did provide progressive and competent leadership for New Orleans in those days. I, like you, am hopeful that future generations of New Orleans civic, political, and business leaders will embrace the groundbreaking significance of these accomplishments. As you stated, it was a time of exclusion, segregation, and division, which we have helped to overcome. You are to be congratulated for going even further by providing leadership on the national stage as president of the National Urban League and to show the rest of the country the caliber of leaders to emerge from New Orleans. We are all proud of your accomplishments as president of the National Urban League. Congratulations on this wonderful night, and I hope we will get a chance to talk at the Urban League Conference. With warm personal regards, Sidney Bartholomew. And now to direct your attention to a special video of the life and times of the late Dutch Morial and the administration that accompanied him into the annals of New Orleans history. Lift every voice and sing. Throughout his life, Ernest Nathan Dutch Morial was a pillar of strength who could not be coerced or intimidated first as a civil rights leader, later as an elected official having been appointed by Governor John J. McKippen as the first black juvenile court judge, then as the first black mayor of New Orleans. Some thought Dutch was so strong he was almost superhuman. When Dutch died suddenly in 1989 at the age of 60, New Orleans was shocked. Thousands of mourners, the powerful and the anonymous, came to say goodbye to Dutch as he lay in state at Gallier Hall. People struggled for words to express their sense of loss. I think he did a lot for young people like me. One of the reasons I stayed in New Orleans was in Dutch Morial. I saw what he did on Poitras. When I was at UNO, he came and talked and said, stay here, we're going to go forward with the city. And I listened to him, and I'm glad I stayed in New Orleans. I prefer Mr. Aragos. <laughs> they would never again have an adversary who took such pleasure in the clash of ideas, philosophies, and strategies. He's contributed an awful lot to our city, and not just the city, but this country. You can play very hard against somebody on the other side and still respect them, still appreciate their style and what they do, even though you may disagree with it. Who was this man, Ernest Nathan Dutch Morial, who touched the hearts of the people so deeply? Dutch Morial was an intense, impatient, driven man of many faces. Indeed, with the passage of the years, his face changed many times. But his heart never changed. He never lost his intensity, his fervor, his passion for life, his willingness to compete. Dutch took great pride in his assertiveness. No one ever had to wonder what was on his mind. He always said it loud and clear. But do I also have the responsibility to entertain television audiences? To always smile, to laugh, to grin, to be a 20th century step and fetch it. <laughs> or I'll 
game comedy? Who was Dutch? That depends on your perspective. For his family, he was husband and father to a remarkable wife, Sybil, and five hardworking, achievement-oriented children, Julie, Mark, Jacques, Cherie, and Monique. For those who knew him only as an historical figure, he was a man of first, the first African-American graduate of the LSU Law School, the first African-American assistant U.S. attorney, the first African-American legislator in Louisiana since Reconstruction, the first African-American juvenile court judge in New Orleans, the first African-American court of appeals judge in Louisiana, and the first African-American mayor of New Orleans. I, Ernest and Moriel, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear, that I will for those who opposed him, he was often a bitterly hated, yet respected enemy. Dutch was one of the toughest politicians, trial lawyers, strategists, and candidates produced by New Orleans in this century. His handling of the 1979 police strike was a Dutch classic. The police union never thought that he would cancel Mardi Gras. Dutch never hesitated. Without making it a racial issue, he out-strategized the mostly white police union and won the strike. He relished the combat found in the courtrooms and on the campaign trail. He helped lead the legal team that dismantled Louisiana segregation laws. And he led a political team that ended the historic role of Jim Crow segregation in New Orleans politics. Dutch's efforts to rebuild the New Orleans Recreation Department were rooted in the humiliations of segregation when he was barred from entering all white playgrounds. Many years ago, when I was a small boy, I daily passed the beautiful park near Legion Fields Avenue. Children were playing there in a kind of freedom that came to them naturally. But because of the laws of my childhood, I was allowed to do no more than look through the bars of the fence. Dutch Morial was as tough an adversary for white liberals and black political groups that dared to oppose him as he was for segregationists. Once you disagree, with the policies of the administration, you're totally cut off. I think he's been a very effective man. I think you have, to, you have to separate the things that he's done for this city from his personality. Dutch, as mayor for eight years, was a scathing critic of the news media. Why can't you tell us what the problem was? Because I don't think you have a need to know what the problem is. I don't think you have a need to know what the problem was. Now, you want to persist? That's my job, isn't it? Dutch's support of Mary Landrieu for a state treasurer in 1983 was a significant step in her journey to become a U.S. Senator in a position to help New Orleans. Dutch was a recognized leader in national politics, sought after by Democratic elected officials and by other big city mayors during his two terms as head of the U.S. Conference of Mayors. Dutch was a tough, unrelenting taskmaster who always had a stinging criticism for a job he didn't think was well done. These issues are moral issues. They're moral issues. The right to home, the right to be fed, the right to a job. They transcend politics, they transcend party politics, or they transcend the ability of a mayor to deal with those issues. They become moral issues. But he also loved his protégés and was their father figure. Judge Michael Bagnera says he molded their spirit in such a way that they wanted to give compassionate public service, working for the common good by reaching out to the poorest, the most oppressed, and the most often forgotten. Dutch didn't just open doors for himself. No mayor in New Orleans history had ever named as many women department heads as Dutch did. Many of these happened to be white. Dutch saw competence, not color. What were Dutch's greatest accomplishments? Certainly his role in ending segregation was historic and incredible. And the police officer said from the car, uh, get off the sidewalk. And I said, officer, I live here. This is my home. He said, well, you can't talk on the sidewalk. I said, officer, I live here. This is my home. He said, from the car. You're under arrest for loitering. And I passed through the grill one of my legislative calling cards. And the uh, police officer who had made the arrest said, I don't want to see that. Is that one of Betty Saber's uh, cards? I got one last week. But we were taken to the central library. Hope for parole shortly thereafter. I know of situations where other persons have uh, remained in jail for periods of time in similar situations. Uh, I think that the police department is doing everything it can to improve the quality and 
the caliber of law enforcement in the city of New Orleans. His election campaigns in 1977 and 1982 to be elected mayor of New Orleans were classics. Former state representative and New Orleans attorney and businessman Sam LeBlanc talks about Mayor Morial's ability to work with the state legislature for New Orleans benefit. I would say that some of the greatest achievements for the city of New Orleans in the legislature have been achieved during Mayor Morial's tenure as mayor of this city. But beyond his political achievements, Dutch was a detail-minded builder and visionary. During his eight years in office, more than $400 million in bonds were sold to improve the city's infrastructure. Some 265 miles of city streets were resurfaced. Neighborhood commercial revitalization districts were established, which helped nurture hundreds of small businesses. Dutch supported the 1984 World's Fair and seized it as the occasion to get state and federal funds to build the world-class convention center from which New Orleans' tourism-based economy has grown and which now bears his name. Dutch loved kids. He took pleasure in being a tutor and role model to children of all ages, sizes, gender, and races. He would stop to talk to them, challenge them, and encourage them to work hard in school. Dutch's greatest legacy was preparing, mentoring, and nurturing today's leaders, including his children. Sons Mark and Jacques often corresponded with their father, offering political advice. February 8, 1982. To Dutch from Mark. Your second primary runoff emphasis must be on personal contact with the voters. With whites, it counteracts the negative media image and would allow us to keep our white vote and increase it. With blacks, you must go door to door in targeted areas. We need enthusiasm and it is best generated by your presence. Presence equals turnout equals victory. So how will Dutch be remembered by the leaders of tomorrow? Dutch Mario opened the doors for everyone. Just Mario and great courage. Dutch Moriel helped free the people. And that's true. When I was about five or six, uh, I remember going to meetings with my dad and always seeing Dutch uh, and uh, speaking everywhere. And he never let racial prejudice or any other kind of prejudice stop him. When I think of Dutch, uh, I think of having a positive attitude towards everything I do. I think of accomplishing all the goals that I set except for myself and doing anything I want to do and being anybody who I want to be. Mark Morial, now mayor of New Orleans, eloquently spoke at his father's funeral in St. Louis Cathedral. You left five strong branches and we're going to keep the faith. You left five strong branches and daddy, we're going to keep the drive alive. Thank you. Soon we'll be done with the troubles of the world. The troubles of the world. Oh, the troubles of the world. Soon I will be done with the troubles of
Outstanding video. Must have been done by somebody at WDSU. <laughs> As you know, there is a natural adversarial position between the press and politicians. Dutch was a worthy combatant, <laughs> to say the least. He and Moon Landrieu were cut from the same cloth. Um, I think they helped usher in the word transparency before it became vogue, because their idea of transparency was to get in your face. Um, the reporter mentioned that Dutch outstrategized the police union leaders during the 1979 police strike. The police union was being led at the time by the National Brotherhood, International Brotherhood of Teamsters. And I recall the first round was taken by the Teamsters. But I remember Dutch's news conference on that Saturday after the Teamsters appeared to have gotten the upper hand and Dutch remarked, this is only a strategic withdrawal for a greater victory. <laughs> and it did come to pass that he did outstrategize the police union. He gave them a contract and all they had to do was sign it. Even if there was nothing in it, they would have won because it would have been the first time they had, they had forced a mayor of the city of New Orleans into the position of signing a contract, but because there was nothing in it, the leaders of the Teamsters refused to sign this contract, and I remember doing a live shot in front of the Teamsters Union Hall on Elysian Fields, and um, I forget the name of the attorney who was representing Dutch at the time. His name was David, a little short guy. Anybody remember his name? Marcello. David Marcello, yes. <laughs> David. <laughs> David was about to explain the nomenclature or the dynamics of what was in the contract. And I remember somebody, I think it was Billy Schultz, who walked up to the stage where David was standing to yank him off so that he didn't divulge the strategy that the mayor was invoking at the time. It was a masterful stroke. And from that day on, I never, ever, ever underestimated Dutch Morio. Not only was he a sharp combatant and negotiator, he had an eye for talent. And many of those talented young people who accompanied him into history will be here tonight to give you their experience and their perspective, beginning with the Honorable Errol Williams, who will talk about the Dutch Morial Cabinet and the administration recognition. Mr. Williams. Thank you and good evening. Mark, I'd like to begin by thanking you for hosting this event tonight. And of course, inviting me, an old timer, to the administration now. Many of you don't know that 34 years ago, I came to city government actually working as the auditor for Moon Landrieu. And then I quit public accounting and submitted a resume to a guy I never met, never had the opportunity to stand in his presence, and got a job. 34 years later, I stand before you, thanking him for the opportunity to work in government. Because Dutch was one of those type of people that I learned early on in life that you meet people along the way that will help you enhance your ability to enhance your career. So when I left public accounting, I asked Dutch one thing on something very simple. I said, Dutch, I quit public accounting because I wanted to pass the CPA exam. And I, the exam's on the 4th, 5th, and 6th of May. Well, he said to me just like this, you start on May 1, 1978, or you don't start at all. <laughs> so those of you who understood what my aspirations were back then can very much appreciate how strong Dutch was in influence in my life. His teachings, as he told me early on in life, son, you have to learn compassion. 
and love for all mankind. And those teachings have prevailed in my life and public office over the past 34 years, both in his administration and as assessor. Dutch, as a former judge, often exhibited what we call a, uh, how would you say it, an inability to be impatient. He just had this impatience about him. And it wasn't until a few years later that I really understood what that impatience was all about. He really did not tolerate a mediocrity. He felt that marginal people couldn't get anything done. And that he had this strong drive in his heart to try and make a difference for everything that he touched. Well, Dutch's touch on me made a difference for me and for the citizens of New Orleans. One thing that I have to think back, and after looking at this movie, it begins to make me think back about a few things that happened during his administration. One was a test of leadership, May 3rd's flood. For those of you who remember it, it's only a few days after taking office. Dutch was confronted with his first real test of, of leadership. Then came the police strike, and then came the Audubon Park litigation where everybody knew where Dutch stood on those issues. Then there was one real huge issue that we took a lot of heat on, and that was the underfunding of the World's Fair. Most of us thought World's Fair was a great event. We just didn't have enough money to put it on. Despite all of this, the challenges Dutch endured, the walls against change, and at no time during his tenure did I ever doubt that Dutch had to, at the forefront of his mission serving everyone's interest in our community. The lives of our citizens are today are much better. Those who have worked in government during that term, we like to think that we were the true implementators of the changes that Dutch wanted. Without help and support from him and his leadership, we would not have been successful to overcome those challenges Dutch faced in his first eight years of being the first black mayor of the city of New Orleans. I'd like to say to everyone who worked in his administration, please stand, please stand, those of you who were a part of the administration when we first entered. Thank you for the opportunity to serve on the Dutch's administration and to serve in, as a leader in this community and the assessor's office over the, my past. But I'd like to say thank you to everyone who helped make Dutch what he was. Because without you, we know that a lot of the streets that got paved, a lot of the parks that got open, a lot of the opportunities that are afforded to many of us today would not be out there if it was not for Dutch. Thank you.